The next part I want to talk about is the amateur. So now we've learned how to hold it, we've learned how to breathe. Now we have to learn what to do with our mouth. And it's very simple. Take your bottom lip and just take the inside fatty part of your lip. As you can tell, I have very big lips, so it's easier for me to do. Some people have very small lips, but you take the inside part and just roll that over your bottom teeth. So basically, we're not going to do this. I don't want you to roll your lip in. I just want you to take and rest your lip on your teeth. This way. And what we're going to do is we're going to make it a little O with our mouths. And you will see that I always use my tongue to put, I put the tongue, the reed on the tongue, and then I let it go on my mouth so I don't hurt my teeth. Never do something really quickly and hurt your teeth that way. I always test where I am with my tongue and then let the mouthpiece rest on it. We'll make a little O with our mouths. This way. Your teeth, your top teeth, will rest on the top of the mouthpiece. Not your lip. So we're not playing this way. We're going to rest our top teeth right on the mouthpiece up here. Sounds funny. I will make an O and just rest my bottom lip on my teeth and relax and then close the O around the mouthpiece. So. So what we're going to do is we're going to make that little O, put your top teeth on the top of the mouthpiece, your bottom lip resting on your teeth, on the bottom teeth, make the O and blow and let's see what happens. And we will just hold the saxophone with no notes down for right now just to make a tone. So I'm going to breathe in. If we're having problems with this right now, you'll notice that I'm not putting any fingers down, I'm just leaving it open. If we're having a little bit of a problem with this, I'll review before too long a technique by where we take the mouthpiece off and we just quack on it. As a matter of fact, maybe we'll do that right now. Why don't we take the mouthpiece off of the neck piece? So this is the mouthpiece. Let's practice just making the embouchure and blowing through it. And if we were out in the woods, we might attract some ducks. So we'll put the top teeth on the top. Rest your bottom lip on your bottom teeth. Make an O and blow. If you get no tone or if you get chirping, which is what I got at first, it's because I had absolutely no pressure around the mouthpiece. What you will do is make the little O a little tighter until you get this type of sound. Hi, my name is Tom Proctor, and I'm your theory guy for this video. What I want to talk to you about is how music theory works. Just to introduce you to it, not to really teach it. Now see, what music theory is, is, is just a language, just like the language that I'm speaking now or that you read. It's just a language of signs and symbols and terms in order for you to communicate. Now music theory is also signs and symbols and terms in order to communicate music. Now, a composer will write down uh, the signs and symbols and terms in order to communicate what the composer would like you to play. Now, what these signs and symbols and terms do is it tells you sound and silence, high and low, fast and slow, and loud and soft. And all of that will, be, will bring about music. Here we have the staff. Now, this is a lot of things in here, a lot of details, but it's very easy. We have the staff in <clears throat> which we number the lines one, two, three, four, and five. Or, in the, at this clef, one, two, three, four, and five. So we count from the bottom up. Now, in between those lines, you'll see spaces. One, two, three, and four. Or, one, two, three, and four. So we count the lines and spaces in order to identify where we are. Now on this staff, this is our timeline going through time to figure out how fast or slow we go. It also tells how high and low. Now this, 
is called a treble clef or a G clef. You see how it kind of looks like a G? Old time G, but it looks kind of like a G. This clef crosses the second line four times. It's the only line that it crosses four times. It kind of circles that second line. Well, what this G clef tells, or treble clef, is that this second line is what the note we call the G note. And from there, we can figure out all the other notes. Now, in this, if you play trombone or tuba, one of those instruments, this is called the bass clef or the F clef. Now, the F clef has two dots that surround this fourth line. And if you imagine it, this kind of looks like a fancy F. And those two lines, the two dots around that line, make this fourth line the F line. And from there, we use that as a reference to learn all the other, where all the notes are. These bar lines help to break up the staff into certain time periods. And when we break this line, put this up, break it up, from bar line to bar line is what we call a measure. Now, there'll be all notes in here, and this measure will help you to guide you along and, and help you know where you are. And then at the very end, we have what we call a double bar, and you see there's a thin line and a thick line. That shows the end of the piece of music. Now, another thing that the staff does is explain how high and low you are supposed to play a note. Remember the G clef? The G clef surrounds the second line, so the second line is what we call the G note. Now, going down from there, the al musical alphabet uses A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, or uh, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Si, and Do depending on what kind of a language you're using. So each space and line goes forward or backward from that G. So going forward, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, and it keeps going. So it keeps repeating itself, A through G, and then start over at A again because there's no H in music. Going, you can go backwards also. G, F, E, D, C, and B. Now, other than these five lines, sometimes we need a little bit of extension. So in between here, on this C, we have a little line that goes through the note, which is called a ledger line. And we also have one up here going through this note. Those ledger lines are extensions of the staff. And they just help you understand if the note is within a space or within the line. Now, if you play trombone or tuba or cello using a bass clef, we have the same thing here. In the F clef or the bass clef, these two dots around the fourth line. So this line is the F line. And we do the same thing as we did with the treble clef in the musical alphabet. With the F being the reference note here, we can go forward F, G, A, B, C, D, and we can go on from there. So you go from line to space, line to space, line to space in learning what all the notes are. Going backwards, F, D, uh, E, D, C, B, A, G, F, E. So it keeps repeating itself from A to G and start over at A again. Now what we need to know is the fast and the slow of it. There are certain parts of notes which would be good to know. The main circular part here in each note is called the note head. Now, as you see, some of the heads are open in the middle, and some of the heads are solid in the middle. 
the upright part here is called the stem. So that's the note's stem. When you get into these notes here, this little thing is called a flag. Now, for every note, there is also a rest. So music is made up of two things, and this is how simple music is. It's made up of sound and silence. That's all. Sound and silence. So the sounds we make in notes, a whole note, the half note, the quarter note, and the eighth note. And in volume two, we'll be learning some other kind of notes. And for every sound, there is the silence corresponding. So for the whole note, we also have a whole rest, half note, we have half rest, the quarter note, we have a quarter rest, and the eighth note, we have an eighth rest. Now sometimes in eighth notes, in order to group them and recognize them better, we sometimes put the eighth notes together in groups of two or three or four. So they're easier to read that way. Now when you put the eighth notes together, the two stems are connected by this line which is called a beam. The beam connects the stems in, in the eighth notes. Or if you have four eighth notes, this beam connects the four eighth notes. This sometimes makes it easier to read, so you'll see that a lot in music. Now in order to group these B 